Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider that we put on every Thursday. Um, today we have with us, um, I'm your host, Raylene Tenno, and we have with us Laurie McGuire with Porter McGuire and Keokona. Um, she is on um, the Hawaii Council's and the CAI's Legislative Action Committee. So she goes through and um, is monitoring the bills at the legislature. And there's two specifically that we're gonna talk about today that really have um, a pretty big impact on HOAs and condos. So um, Lori, thank you for joining me today um, and doing this segment um, with me. Um, these two are really co very concerning. <laughs> Um, so well, let's start off with showing up the PowerPoint for the uh, SB 2876. And this one is about boards expending funds to enforce any de minimis violations of association rules or regulations. So usually, um, so a de minimis, um, the legal explanation on the next slide would be a um, something that's kind of like minor or small according to the definition that I found. So why don't you explain to us how this is gonna impact a lot of the HOAs? Um, sure, um, basically this amends HRS 421J 10, subsection 10, and 514B uh, subsection 104. And what it does is it prohibits boards from spending money to enforce their governing documents if these violations don't affect the health and safety of the owners and occupants, or the violation doesn't devalue the property. Well, that comprises numerous covenants within the declarations of, or bylaws, or house rules of condominiums and HOAs. This is a violation of the US Constitution. It impairs if you will, the, um, the right to uh, enforce contractual obligations. And so basically what you're gonna have is, for example, take an HOA. They have design guidelines. Um, Ocean Point has, for example, a number of sub-associations that have various design guidelines. Um, you know, you can argue that these design guidelines don't necessarily affect the health and safety. Um, and you know, you can pick out certain design guidelines that you can say, well, if I if they violate this particular design guidelines, it's not necessarily going to devalue the property. So you can't enforce it. So what's going to happen is owners, individual owners can enforce these, and you're going to have a bunch of disputes with the individual owners. But let's say you've got somebody who has a palm tree and under the design guidelines that, you know, that palm tree can't be over a set height because it's gonna block the neighbor's view. Well, under, under the, this new law, you won't be, you as the association won't be able to enforce that rule because it doesn't affect health and safety and the palm tree doesn't devalue the property. And it also doesn't say which property it will devalue, you know what I mean? In other words, maybe it doesn't devalue your property, but it's gonna devalue your neighbor's property. So let's say, for example, somebody in the HOA, you know, they, they typically have uh, design schemes for painting, right? And, and you as an owner, you can pick from a certain selection of paints and that goes with their design guidelines. Well, under, under this law, anybody can paint their house whatever color they want because it doesn't necessarily devalue their house and it's not health and safety. Well, that shoots the, uh, the design guidelines completely off the block, basically. Right. I mean, you won't be able to enforce them at that point. Now there again, owners will be able to enforce them. The law doesn't apply to them. It only applies to the associations. So you could potentially have numerous fights between neighbors all over the place depending on uh, you know what the situation is. So it's a problem. Yeah, that's not gonna be very healthy. Um, I can imagine they're gonna clog up small claims court. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, yeah. um, the circuit court for that matter, we just don't know. And it was recently passed with amendments. And as I understand it, 
they are going to be amending the definition of de minimis. So I haven't seen the proposed amendment yet to see you know, what the, the new definition is gonna stay. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the website last night either, nothing posted. And you know, when, when you talk about health and safety sometimes, like say we're talking about a plant, you know, um, you know, I know from experience that, you know, the areca palms, how they grow and they get really big. I mean, I was there when we're, there was a demolition going on in the property and they had used the backhoe to remove the areca palm. Mm -hmm. When they dug in there, I'm not kidding. All these rats came out and scattered. I was so freaked, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, I had no clue that they, you know, burrow into those. So it's always been my thing. Nope, not doing any of those Rick palms in my yard, you know, because, you know, the rats are, you know, they're everywhere. They're anywhere, you know, and so they use that to burrow in and create housing. So that to me, that's a health and safety hazard, mm -hmm. you know, but then somebody else might not even know that information, right? You know, or not have even experienced it. So sometimes to me, I think, what someone considers health and safety is like in the eye of the beholder? Well, uh, certainly whether or not it's something is devalued is in the eye of the beholder. You know what I mean? In terms of, because it doesn't say, you know, you have to diminish the value by X amount in order for it to devalue. There's no definition of, of what exactly constitutes devaluation. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, it's, it's overbroad. It's vague and ambiguous at this point. Um, uh, it, it's a disaster. It's a, it's a violation of the U.S. Constitution as drafted. Okay, so let's move on to 1784 because that one's huge. That one is big. I mean, I was reading it and I was highlighting things and I'm like, this is not good. Um, one of the main points that I, I see is that it's going to conflict with our existing um, city and county LSC requirement, right? And it's going to require that with the state 1780 house bill 1784 it's going to require another engineer to do these inspections and we're like and it's every seven years well it's a layer it's it's a layer upon layer so yeah you know, you've got um you know you've got the the uh life safety the fire sprinklers right that's one layer and now you've got these building inspections that's going to be another layer and we've got the electronic vehicles coming up too, right, for condominiums. That's, in fact, another layer. And the thing that um, that really caught my attention is this bill applies to all buildings in the state yeah. that are over five stories in height. Every single building and every building's inspection, the, the initial inspection must be completed by December 31st, 2026. That's less than four years from now. <laughs> You know, we don't have enough professionals in the state to do yeah. that, for one thing. And it's up to the building council to impose this. Well, the building council is comprised of 12 members and they're all volunteers. Right, and right. So now, I mean, as I understand it, and I don't have firsthand knowledge, but as I understand it, they're overworked and overburdened as it is. And this is, this is a, a huge burden on them. You know, I, I mean, I understand the rationale for why the legislature uh, is seeking to implement this, but I think at minimum at this stage, if they're serious about this, they need to uh, establish a task force to really look at this and give it some thought in terms of, you know, can they actually do this? Like have all these inspections by December 3rd, 2026. You know, maybe, maybe they want to stagger the initial inspections and have, you know, all buildings that are that were built prior to 1960 inspected. Right you know, by this date and buildings that were constructed from 1960 to 1970, you know, by December 31st, 2028 right. and so on, you know. Right, right. Um, and really kind of separating away. I mean, I would think they, because, you know, one of the big issues is because we're in a salt water air environment, I would think they would probably maybe give priority to the ones closer to water versus the ones that are further inland. You know, right. that could be one consideration. Um, but really what bothered me is um, 
the duplication of the inspections. You have your LSE, you got, a, you got your engineer, and now this one's gonna require another engineer. And also the, when they see something that's a defect, um, the timelines, I mean, like they want it fixed immediately. And we're like, we, you know, some boards don't always meet every month, you know, or just to try to remedy it immediately, um, you know, depending on what the size of it, just to try to get a contractor out to even look at that is going to wreak havoc. Um, and then the permitting part seems really confusing because city and county is the one that usually does the permitting, right? But in right. here, they are issuing the permits. Well, the way it's worded, it says you submit your application for the permit to the uh, building council. Now, I don't know if that means a copy of your permit application, but the other thing is they require you, once you've determined that a building is unsafe, then you know all, all sorts of acts kick in that you've got to do immediately. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to immediately make it safe you know, whatever the situation is, whether it's, you know, putting up barriers or that orange fencing to keep people out, or you've got to do something mm -hmm. to make it safe. And then you've, uh, you know, I mean, let me look at this next one here. Um, you have to notify the owner of the building. So the, the inspector, the professional, which is an engineer, a structural engineer, um, has to notify the owner of the building and within 12 hours yeah. of making that determination you have to notify that the particular county agency so here on Oahu it would be DPP mm -hmm. you've got to notify them and then you've got to um, within 24 hours provide a, a full report to the building council um, it, you've got to make a determination of the classification. Is it safe, unsafe, or safe with the repair and maintenance program? Um, make the recommendations. Uh, you know, um, let me see. Submit a permit application within three days of commencement, of commencement of the work, I assume. Uh, but you've got to start work immediately. Well, you're right. How does this work for, for let's say, a condominium association? Uh, you know, number one, the board, do they have to hold an emergency meeting? I mean, it sounds to me like they can't even go out for bids yeah. on it. They don't yeah. have time to go out right. for bids, you know. Right. Um, do they not have to wait for the permit to be issued? It often takes months for permits to be issued. Granted, this is going to be an emergency situation. So, you know, maybe they have a provision that allows them not to obtain a permit in an emergency situation. Candidly, I don't know. I haven't looked into that. Um, and, you know, when you're talking about um, health and safety um, things when it comes to buildings, I mean, most buildings, your high rises, um, apartment, buildings, they're kind of cognizant of the maintenance and care. And what kind of um, caught me was um, when they're when the engineer is doing their um, inspection, they're going to look at past repair and maintenance upkeep, so record keeping. Right. So, um, how many buildings really keep a history or a diary of all their repairs? And plus, two in statute, don't the managing agents only retain copies for three years? Um, I, I believe it's it statute three to seven. Yeah, so. Um, I'm not sure how many years they actually keep and when they actually start dumping stuff, you know, I mean, right. like most offices you really start keep, you really start dumping when you run out of space. Well, <laughs> under this statute, you're going to have to keep them for years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and it's um, on a seven year cycle. So you've got to go through this every seven years. Yeah. So almost like you're retaining records for 10 years just to keep, just to make sure, you know, but you know, now that's storage, but now it's another task that people, but it's kind of a good task to make sure you have a history of your maintenance and repairs anyways, for some buildings that don't even kind of do that. Um, I know even single family homes, usually the plumbers and guys, you need to write the date of when you replace that um, hot water heater, you know? And I go, yeah, I do that. I have a marsh pen and it's marked over there because I won't remember. I know it was sometime a few years ago, you know, but, um, it's going to be, this is going to be gnarly. And I really think they're going to butt heads with the LSC at some point in time. 
um, especially with your deadlines. The permitting issue is a big question mark. Who's really going to issue it? Who's really going to be in charge? Because now you have two entities and they might eventually butt heads. And then you've got the boards that got to go, okay, where are we in the budget to get this done? And some well, of it, they may have already the done. Thing. The building, they're not paid. They're volunteers. Yeah. So, you know, granted, everybody at DPP, those folks are paid, <laughs> you know, so I'm assuming they'll put a lot of this off on them, right? Because yeah. under, under the statute, the building council can uh, basically draft rules for these things, right? And they mm -hmm. can establish a fee. One thing I didn't see was any enforcement mechanism uh, for this. So, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure that's coming if, if it does actually uh, get adopted. But, you know, one of the things I noticed too was um, it required that the owner of the building sign a notarized affidavit saying that the required repairs will be completed within the, uh, the time frame established. Well, an owner would be the board and how would the board know when, you know, the answer to that question? Right, right. I mean, I could see maybe their engineer uh, signing an affidavit, but, you know, and granted it allows for, uh, you know, unexpected delays, but nonetheless. Yeah. Um, so many things like that particular aspect that what kind of bothers me as a condo board member is say you have um, a repair project coming up you know to address certain issues but now you have this professional coming in and saying no you need to do it this way well you know we already went through a design professional to deal with this other issue and we've already got our scope of work defined we've already got it um you know a dollar range planned now you're going to be like we got to make a left turn, you know, and it could throw up, put a whole monkey wrench into all the planning that they've done so far. Um, well, and, and that's I, what reserve studies are for, right? Mm -hmm, right. That's one of the reasons you have reserve studies is so you can see what needs to be done and set aside money for these things and, and, you know, do these various projects ever so many years. So but if you have someone that comes in, if this gets into law and comes in and, you know, says, well, I found this, well, it's going to throw a runky wrench into your reserves as well, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. it's going to throw maintenance fees sky high. You know, some of these seniors that have, have lived in their units for 30 years and, you know, are trying to live like, you know, all I got to do is now is pay my maintenance fees. Well, now your maintenance right. fee could be, could be as high as almost, and some are like another mortgage payment, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, so it's out of control. <laughs> potentially, it is. Potentially, that's true. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, I understand the, the issue, right? I mean, this was uh, this was in, enacted to address the Surfside collapse in, in Florida. However, that Surfside collapse related to um, you know, it wasn't, it, as I understand it, it didn't have anything to do with the exterior of the building, right? It was the load bearing walls within the structure itself, deep within the structure that collapsed. So it doesn't really address the situation that happened in Florida. And, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I, I understand, uh, you know, the, the legislature's concerns, but... <clears throat> I really believe they need to give this more thought. Yeah, and, and didn't the Florida one also have to do with um, water intrusion? From they had an up above ground swimming pool, yes. and yeah, that's yeah. always a big can of worms when you right. have an above ground swimming pool. You mm -hmm. know, um, so it, it's not kind of apples to apples. I want to say. Yeah. You know, yeah, I um, and I, I really, I really do think that. Um, as a condo board, uh, most of them are very, especially the high rises, they're very on top of their stuff. You know, um, I know there's a one condo or it's actually an apartment building. I don't think it's actually a condo, but it's in Makiki and it's a corner. And I, I remember a few years ago, you could see they had a Lanai issue because mm -hmm. the railings, I think the railings all fell off and right. it's been taking them years to get it fixed. I know one unit is already fixed, but you see it boarded up on another one up above, mm -hmm. but, um, 
uh, you know, some of those repairs are are kind of hard, you know. Um, it takes time. Then you got to find the manpower, the person qualified enough to do that kind of work. It's falling repair, you can't just find anybody. Oh, no. No, it's fall repair is very expensive, but it needs to be done. Yeah. Like I said, you know, most associations are on top of the small issues because it's in your face. You can see it. It's well, and they know that the, 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 the worst case scenario damage that it could potentially be. So they want to catch it early on. So they're not in a bigger dollar amount of even have to do the repair. They know they have to fix it just like termites. I always compare the two because, you know, if you let termites go, your, your house could end up collapsing, you know, if you don't address it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like spalling, like all of one center, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> you see the chunks of concrete falling off, you know. Yeah. So where do you think this is going to going to going to go? Um, I mean, I just, you know, the safe and unsafe or safe with repair and maintenance programs, you know, um, it, this is just and I, I really didn't like the building official makes the final determination. Well, who's OK? I had that same question and I looked at it in in 107.22. That is, um, hang on a minute, let me get it here. That is the State Building Code Council. That is the section of, um, of chapter 107 that addresses the State Building Code Council. And one of the members that's appointed to the council is one county building official from each of the four counties appointed by the mayor. So that building official is who ultimately is going to make the decision on any appeal. So the appeal goes to the building council. The building council then makes a recommendation to the building official and the building official makes the final determination in the event that there is an appeal of a particular report telling the owners that there is an unsafe condition in their building. You know, I might get slapped for saying this, but you know, they're all volunteers, but they're all within the industry. So, um, but right. you know, they're all within the building industry, right? But yeah. um, I mean, I can see it being very one-sided because they want the jobs. So of course, are you really gonna get a fair shake, a reasonable shake, you know, when there's, um, there's an issue, you know? Well, you know, I was looking at the testimony submitted today on House Bill 1784, and uh, there was testimony submitted by, uh, it appears that this, this gentleman is uh, an engineer by profession or an architect. And he was saying that in the Florida case, the engineer was actually sued by the owners of the Surfside condominium and they won. And the issue was that they alleged that he failed to tell each individual owner what he found in his report. Although it's my understanding he told the board, they were saying he was, he was required to tell each individual owner and they were successful. They sued him and succeeded. I mean, I don't know if that's correct, you know, because that, that seems like that case was litigated quite fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, for that to be happening, but nonetheless, I mean, he, you know, that engineer was sued. So you never know, but you're right. We have a shortage of engineers in the, in the state already. And many of them are, are currently consumed with these life safety evaluations. So, Cause the last time I looked on DCCA, there was only a handful of licensed engineers. I wanna say they're like only 20 of them. There's not that many. And there are many buildings within the state that are greater than five stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, this is really going to, um, it, it's throwing everybody, this is going to throw everybody in a tizzy. Um, it's, it's not good. So when, do you know when the next hearing is going to be on this? Well, it was today at one o'clock. Today at one o'clock. So, it, okay. you know, who knows? As of right now, maybe it's been deferred. Um, you know, but it, if it passes, then it's going to cross over to the Senate. So we'll see <laughs> what happens. So I do know there was a companion bill in the Senate that died. The 2003, so, I think it was, right? Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Senate Bill 203. So um, I think we're almost nearing our time, but I really want, I think both Loria and I want to leave 
this segment with a question to our um, to our audience. What is going to be the impact of this bill on your own individual condominium? Everybody's got to start thinking about it um, because I think that this something like this is going to come up every single year in the legislature. Um, I don't think it's going to go away easily. There's always going to be a variation of it. Um, because of what happened at Surfside. I mean, it's just like what happened with Marco Polo and the fire. It's, right. you know, there's always going to be some new way, you know, little wormy way that they were going to want to um, do their fire department or even their, their building stuff, you know, so mm -hmm. it's not going to go away. We have to be prepared and start um, planning, making sure we have our documents in order to prove that we've done this, this, and this, you know, right. or what our planned um intention is our long-range goal for this this and this so mm -hmm. they can really see that um we're addressing it that the board is cognizant and they are addressing it mm -hmm. you know um and i really think i really think you know the majority of our condo buildings are 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 um are really cognizant of their building and really take care of their buildings you mm -hmm. know um for the most part you know, I'm sure there's some that are like little lackeys, but, you know, for the most part, I think the majority of them do. Um, they make that concerted effort to do it. Well, it's an asset. It's a, it's a valuable asset. Right. And yeah. And, it, and it's, you know, I mean, nobody wants to have your building fall apart. Then you're like houseless, <laughs> you know, and your asset literally disappeared. The money you paid into it is, is gone. You know, you may never, ever recover that. Um, so any last words for our condo boards coming from an attorney? I would just say keep an eye on this bill, you know, go to the uh, legislative website today and see what happened with that bill if it was deferred or if it passed out with amendments. And if it passed with amendments or even passed as drafted, uh, then we need to continue to keep an eye on this and uh, definitely submit testimony, uh, provide your two cents. Yeah, we, I mean, everybody has a voice and we really need to get those voices heard um i did read some of them um well i think one said good luck or something like that i kind of chuckled at that one you know but um there's i mean the majority of them were opposing i didn't see anything that was really any that was really positive everybody was really opposing and they also brought up the stuff that they already have to do with the, L the lses you right. know yes so okay larise i really want to thank you um for bringing this bill up and um being on condo insider with me and um i hope to see you soon i hope to see you on testimony <laughs> yes, absolutely thanks okay. for having me i appreciate okay. it thank you have a nice have a nice good afternoon all right aloha okay. thank you Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.